Good afternoon. Good afternoon. <coughs> Hi. Um, I know you're looking for an introduction. You're getting none. So you're going to have to spend another 10, 15 minutes trying to figure out who I am. Um, so I'll start off with um, leading. They said I'm supposed to introduce myself as one of the leaders. But unfortunately, I don't believe I am, even though somebody might have made me uh, change my mind today. I'll tell you why I said that at the end. Um, and then we're talking about what's ahead, uh, what lies ahead, leading for the future. All of these things come to mind. And the whole entire time I was thinking, trying to prepare for this, the beginning is always at the end. So how are we going to know what's ahead? When we say we're beginning, we're also ending. When we're ending, we're beginning. So how are we supposed to know what's ahead? But isn't that the beauty of life? We don't know what's ahead, so we enjoy living life because we don't know what's ahead. Well, I might actually confuse you with another narrative later on, but let's begin with this. Um, I will ask you guys to take two to three seconds and close your eyes. You can open. I know you've always been told that there is a light at the end of the tunnel. I'm here to tell you there is no light at the end of the tunnel. We grew up being told, including myself, or being asked, rather, what do you want to be? Oh, uh, how I dreaded that question. I did not know what I wanted to be. So they ask, what do you want to be? God, like, I'm confused. I need to figure out something. So yeah, I was lost. And I loved being lost because that's the only way. <clears throat> I won't tell you. But there's no light at the end of the tunnel because there's no darkness at the beginning. You closed your eyes three, four seconds, but you all had the urge to open your eyes again because you needed to see. You needed to be creative. You needed to be authentic. You needed to be, you need to, needed to exist. So you wanted to open up your eyes. So really, there isn't that light you're looking for at the end of the tunnel because it's with the darkness that comes the creativity. It's with the darkness that comes the need, the urge, to, to build something new, to live, to explore. Now, I talked about being lost. I loved being lost. What's not lost can't be found. If you don't lose something, you don't start looking for it. So there's beauty in being lost, but what do you want to be when you grow up? I don't know. You're lost? Yes, there's beauty in it. I'm lost. I'm ready to be found by others, by myself, by my soul. Anything is possible. I can be found here, I can be found somewhere else, I can be found underground, in the sky, but I'm willing to be found. So what's not lost is not really found. So when we say what well, lies ahead, it's about really being lost. Now, there's also light. I'm not cruel. There's light, but that light you see at a distance is always at a distance. The sun during the day, the moon during the night, they're all at a distance. You can only get to them in due time, in due process, in due attention. So what is, what is at a distance is at, dis at a distance. The light you see from far is far, but it doesn't mean that you can't reach it. It just means you have to go through the right process, the right journey, to be able to get there. To do that, you need to understand every future that exists. The dark, the light, everything in between that we are told to never recognize, or we are, we are pushed to never recognize, is the future you need to be able to recognize because it is important, it's coordinated, and they exist in accordance to nature. Now, what does this all have to do with leading for the future, 
what, what lies ahead and everything else. Well, let's see. We always see what is emerging, always. What happens is, even though we see what's emerging, we're so scared to admit it because we also know with everything that is emerging, there's always something that's dying and it's scary. For us to admit what is dying, we need to be audacious. We need to be bold enough to say, to claim something is dying, as painful as it might be. We have to be very authentic. So we have to tell the truth. So we have to be very honest. And we have to tell the authentic story. OK, to do that all, you also have to be very hard-headed. So leading for the future is where this whole story comes into play. If you want to lead for the future, you have one million people that you want to have follow you, but you will only have five. OK, maybe 10. Maybe 1,000. Let me not be cruel. The critical five or 10 or 1,000 are the only thing that you need. You have to be very, be very hard-headed, very hard-headed, because it's only five out of a million, 10 out of a million, 1,000 out of a million that is going to follow. But that does not mean, even though you're hard-headed, you can't be humane, because the one million is going to have to live with the fact that you're hard-headed, you see what is emerging, and you also see what is dying. So you have to be humane. And to be humane means that you have to lead from the heart. You have to be honest. You have to be audacious, authentic, hard-headed, and of course, humane. And then that's where your heart comes in. You lead from your heart. You lead for the future. You lead for what lies ahead. Galatuma, I'm a second